In this video, we are going to present a demonstration of the I-29 nodes. My name is Sanmit Chabatacharya. I'm an application specialist at Lingomatics. In this video, we'll be looking at various topics. First, we'll see how you can download the I-29 nodes. Next, we'll see how you can install them on your desktop or laptop. We'll next see how you can open Lime and locate these I-29 nodes. Finally, we'll see an application of how you can create a simple workflow using the I-29 nodes and how you can run this workflow within Lime. If you want to create a workflow in Lime using the I-29 nodes, the first thing to do will be to download the I-29 nodes. In order to do so, go to your I-3 software download page. You may need a username and password to log into this page. Once you are on this page, click on the link called Download 9 Nodes. This will take you to another page which shows you a link to download the 9 nodes as well as you will see a release notes with important information concerning these 9 nodes. Clicking on this link will prompt on a location on your computer. Go ahead and save these 9 nodes. Once you have saved the nine nodes on your computer, you can use an uncompression tool like 7-zip or WinZip to unarchive this. Once you extract the contents, you'll notice there's a jar file within this. The next step would be to install this jar file within the nine application. In order to do so, copy this jar file and go to your NIME installation location. Within that folder, you'll find a drop-ins subfolder. Go to this drop-ins folder and paste the copied jar here. Once we have done this, the next step would be to open up NIME. In order to do so, go to the Start menu and type in NIME. In the search results, you'll find the NIME analytics platform. Click on that and it will open NIME up. If you already had the NIME application running, then you must close and restart NIME so that it can identify the JAR file within the NIME application. When you open up NIME, this is the view you should see. On the left bottom corner of this page, you should see the Lingomatics i 3 api node. Within this node, you'll see several indexing, querying, and utilities nodes. You can open each of these up to see the subnodes. Once we have the i 3 9 nodes within NIME, we can create a simple workflow to show you how to use these NIME nodes in a workflow. To create a new workflow in NIME, go to Files, click on New, Click on New Nine Workflow, then Next, and give your project a name. And finally, click on Finish to create this new project. On the left hand side, under the local folder, you should see your new project. Right click on that and select Workflow Credentials. Within this dialog box, we are going to add the i 2 login and password information. This will be the i 2 server on which you want to run your NIME workflow. Click on Add, then give your credential identifier a name. Type in your username. and click on OK. Now that we have set up the username and password for your NIME workflow, we can simply drag and drop the different NIME nodes into this workspace. 
To begin with, we'll use the Query Cataloger 9 node. When you drag and drop this particular I2E9 node, you'll notice it has an alert sign as well as a red dot signifying that this particular node hasn't been configured yet. To configure this node, we can right click on it and click on configure. Within the options tab, you have to enter the I2E server URL. The on demand server on which I'm going to run this particular workflow is shown here. I'm going to simply copy this and paste it in this place. You should also select the workflow credentials in this step. This is what we had set up in the previous step. Once you're done with that, if you don't have to specify a particular license pool on which you'll be running your batch query, you can simply click on Apply and then click on OK. You'll notice that for this particular mode, the alert sign is now gone and you'll see an orange light signifying that this particular node is ready to be run. To run this node, you can right click on it and click on Execute. The Query Cataloger node that we are using here is meant to pull out all the different queries that are present on your server that you have access to. A brief description of each node is present on the right hand side within this node description section. Once this nine node finished execution, you should see a green light here. Right click on this node and select i 2 Query Catalog. This should show you a link of all the different queries that you have present on your server. It also shows you whether this particular query is a single query or a multi-query. This gives you a very easy way of browsing through all the queries that are present on your server and selecting the ones that you want to use in your workflow. Well, this particular node shows you how you can look at information on the server. The next application will be to show you how you can create an actual workflow within Nine. For this part, we are going to use the i 2 Query Submitter 9 node. As with the previous node, here also you notice that there's an alert icon and a red dot showing that this particular node has not been configured. In order to configure this Query Submitter node, you can right click on this and click on Configure. Within the Options tab, as before, you have to set up the i 2 server URL. I'm going to simply copy and paste the server URL here, then select the workflow credentials from the one I have set up before. Then I'm going to move to the Query tab, and here you have an option to select the query location. You can either use a local query file and browse to that location, or you can select a query file which is on the server. I'm going to use a query which is present as a resource query within i 2 and should be present on your on-demand server or your enterprise installation. I already have copied and pasted the location of the query file here, and I'm going to select that and put it in this form. I also have an option to select which index I'm going to use in my workflow. Since I have not said this before, I'm also going to select this. I'm going to use the SORASIS training index for this purpose. Notice that both the query as well as the index that you use in the NIME workflow has to be published. With the query submitter node, what we are doing is to run this particular query on this particular index. You should notice that you cannot have any spaces in your index URI. So replace this space with percentage 20, which signifies 
a space. Now you can click on apply and click on OK. Once you have configured this, you'll notice that the light has changed to yellow. Now you can right click on Require Submitter and click on Execute. And you will see that this particular node starts running. Once this particular node has finished its operation, you see that the light has turned into green. Now we are going to extract the results out of the query submitter using one of the utilities, i29 nodes. In this particular video, we are going to use the i 2 CSV or TSV downloader. You could also have used the file downloader or the tree maker depending on the application that you are interested in. I'm going to select the CSV TSV downloader and drag and drop it within this workspace. Since I'm going to take the results out of the query submitter and put it into the i 2 csv TSV downloader, I'm going to simply click on this arrow to connect these two nodes together. As with the other nodes, you'll notice that there's an exclamation mark and a red signal on this particular node, which means that it hasn't been configured yet. To configure this node, right-click on the CSV TSV downloader, select Configure, and then within the Options tab, you have to put in the server URL. I'm going to simply copy and paste the server URL in this space. For the workflow credentials, I'm going to select the predefined credentials and then click on Apply and OK. And you'll see that the color has now changed to yellow, means that it's ready to be run. You can right click on this and then click on Execute. Once the execution is complete, you see the light turn into green, meaning that it was successful in executing this node. At this stage, you can also see what the CSV TSV downloader extracted from the query submitter. Right click on this node and select the i 2 csv tsv data file. And what you see here is the information extracted from the query submitter. In this particular case, the query was looking for the content words within a set of documents. And here are the set of content words from these documents, along with the link to the publication where these are coming from, how many hints we found, and other relevant information. Next, we are going to use a filter to select only the top few hits from the CSV TSV downloader. To search for a node that you are interested in, you can simply start typing it in here, and I will find the node of interest for you. I'm going to use the row filter node here. Since the row filter is going to consume data from the previous node, I'm going to connect these by this arrow. As with the previous nodes, I also have to configure the row filter node. To do that, simply right click and click on configure. And then I'm going to select include rows by number and then select 20. And this means I'm going to filter rows from 1 to 20. Once you have done this, click on Apply and click on OK. Once this node is ready to be run, go ahead and right click on it and click on Execute. And you'll see that this has finished processing and turned into green. Next, we are going to show these results in a pie chart. You can look for pie chart within NIME application. And I'm going to use this interactive pie chart. You can connect the arrow coming from the row filter to the pie chart. And then right click and click on execute. Once this has finished processing, as shown by the green light, you can right click on this pie chart and click on View Pie Chart. 
What we'll see here is a pie chart which is populated with information coming from the query submitter through the row filter. Within this pie chart, you can click on any of these pieces to highlight any particular word of interest. With this simple application, we have shown you how you can create and run a particular workflow in Nine. If you have any further questions, please send them to i2e support at lingomatics.com.